Hello and welcome to the match preview as we look forward to the upcoming fixture between Crystal Palace and Luton Town. I'm joined today by Nick. Hello, Nick. Hello. How's it going? And and T. How are you, T? What's going on, man? So remember, please hit the like button, subscribe for future content. And if you listen to the podcast, give us a little thumbs up on whatever app you're listening to. We really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so big match coming up, gentlemen, against Luton Town. Let me get your quick thoughts from everyone on the um, Nick first. Your thoughts on the um, Spurs match? Quietest atmosphere in an away ground that holds nearly 70,000 people I've known. Um, and the Palace fans were taking the mix, saying, is this Highbury? Whatever. I only went because an old school pal, Jolly Jenkins, is completing his 92. I wouldn't have bothered otherwise. And um, up until the 75th minute, I was thinking, actually, yeah, I've made the right decision here because we seem to be holding Tottenham all right. Yes, they were the better team. Um, but were it not for an error from uh, Joachim Anderson, uh, perhaps we might have had a different different story. We all knew that Son was going to score anyway because he always does. Um, I think we just ran out of steam and it just brings up the debate of rich teams having better benches and being able to make changes uh, with far more high quality players than, than the likes of us little teams like Palace, Fulham, Burnley, Sheffield United, Luton, et cetera, et cetera, can do. And it's it's just exacerbated the, the top six gap with maybe Villa bucking the trend this season. Yeah, we'll get to the um, um, the uh, recruitment part when we talk about Doug in a bit. But um, I just want to say again, as I mentioned on the uh, player ratings, I actually put a, a bet <coughs> on Werner anytime score and and Son anytime score. So I want some money, but don't kill me. I know I shouldn't have done that, but I was trying to I was trying to jinx them. It didn't work. T, your thoughts on the match? I know it's oh, it, it, tell the two matches uh, somewhat, man. Um, really. Impressed by the way we came out, how we handled things. Um, I, I didn't like how much possession we gave up. Um, and I don't know. I guess I think part of it might have been just the caution of the manager because of, you know, not feeling like he may maybe could have implemented the system all the way, but I mean, I, I felt like we gave him a little bit too much respect, and even with giving that that respect, we were still able to to grab the one 0 lead. But um, yeah, mistakes in, in in the second half, along with um, I think uh, some subs that were um less than desirable. Um, I was actually surprised yeah. to see Will Hughes come on, if I, if I'm being quite honest with you. Um, but uh, nonetheless, I think uh. A learning, uh, a, a learning phase, a learning step for us. I think this result would have been a lot more, um, a lot more hurtful for us had we not gotten the victory um, last week. Great so um, I feel like you know we could stand to lose this one um, a little bit more, being that we got the three points la uh, last week, and now we can hopefully. Uh, going to next week against Luton and, uh, and, and come out on top. Yeah, the first I was kind of, I thought we'd go at them more because um, we, we talked before the game about the kind of positivity of Glasner and how it wasn't going to be Roy Ball, but actually it did seem to be like that. And I was thinking, oh, maybe we'll do a Wolves and, and put, a, put a couple past them at least. Right. But then I looked back at the stats for the Wolves game after the Palace, after we played uh, very similar to the weekend, Palace, Palace, yeah. and uh, it was very low possession for Wolves. Yep, so right. you're not going to go to you're not going to go to to Spurs and and take them on. And I hate the phrase free hit, um, but what me? You know, you know. But it's it's it is what it is. They're a, they're a top five, top six team. Um, and we haven't beaten since 1997. And, you know, I'm getting to the point where I'd like to see us beat Tottenham almost more than I'd like to see us win a trophy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. Um, no. We're going to get back to the tactics part when we talk about tactics for Luton. But I want to talk about quickly about the under-21. Um, the reason is they have now got undefeated so far this season. They've made 
the semifinals of one tournament and the quarterfinals of another. And yesterday they beat, yesterday at the time of recording, they beat Stoke City uh, in a Premier League uh, two match, two to one. But I want to bring it up because there are a couple of players in that, in that, in that team I want to talk about very quickly. One mm-hmm. is Danny Imray. He's a right wing back. He now has eight goals on the season. Uh, if you don't follow the 21, they play a very similar style to Glasner. It's not Glasner, uh, but they've been doing it all season. Uh, they've been playing with uh, three center backs, wing backs, two guys, two defensive midfielders in the middle, and then they kind of rotate the, the three attacking uh, players. Um, Imre's doing really well. I think he might need a loan uh, before he gets in the side, but I think honestly, next season with him as a backup to Munoz could be uh, big. And I'll get your guys' comment on that too. But I want to add two more players. One is Franke Uma. Been trained with the first team for quite a bit. Scored again yesterday. I think he's got nine or ten goals this season. Doing really, really well. Young kid from Ireland. I think he's got a big future ahead. Rashawn Matherin, better known as um, Travis B, scored again yesterday. He's got eight goals this season. Again, another guy doing real well. And lastly, have to give a big shout out, Nathan Ferguson. Came on yesterday, 30 minutes. Listen, man, I know people have made comments about him. I'm so happy for that kid. He's been through hell as a Palace player with injuries. Hopefully, that's just a precursor to him getting some first team in before the end of the season. But really good news about him. So, just I'll go to UTT first. Any thoughts on either the Ferguson comeback, Imre, Uma, Matherin, anything on the 21? I know you follow him a lot. So, being quite honest with you, I am so impressed with Danny Imre. Um, and I think that the implementation of Glasner's system um, will work in his favor more than anybody else that's coming through our our academy ranks right now, um, because there is an immediate need for what he can provide, um, and that's cover to right wing back. Um, now, I'm not saying he's Premier League ready. I'm not saying that at all. But what I am saying is that he has an opportunity now to uh, play with the first team through the summer, um, get some good reps. And if he you know, doesn't find himself uh, possibly sliding into a reserve role behind a Munoz, then like you said, Patrick, he finds himself probably going on a high caliber loan or a really good loan yep. and that will probably set him up for uh for stepping into a role with us uh, down the road. Um, Never mind the summer, T. Um, when we after we played Luton, we're not playing again until the thirtieth, so we've got quite a bit of time. So and, he could uh, he could find himself in training with them, yeah. Yeah, dependent on fixtures yeah. for the uh, for the under twenty ones, but there's there's no reason why not. Yeah, and, and I mean, in and with that being said, you know, talking about squad depth and things like that. I mean, he he feels a need um, that we have as far as um, having that 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 protection from Munoz. And who knows, you know, uh, God forbid anything happens to Munoz. But we've seen multiple times in this club's history when um, a first team player goes down and the young guys thrust in there and they perform. So um, really impressed by him. Uh, Franco's done an amazing job. He he stepped in um, and, and has been training a lot with the the uh, the the senior guys. Um, I've always been impressed with Rashawn Matherin back to the Tottenham days. Like, I still don't know how we got him, but I'm happy we did. Um, I guess they, they ran out of patience with him after that ACL injury. Injuries, so, yeah, injuries. Yeah, so, yeah. so um, I think he could find himself getting a loan uh, after this season uh, and, and playing some good minutes somewhere. Um, so, I mean, I, I – I think the the plan that has been set forward for the academy is really coming into into the view a little bit when you got such talented players that are coming through the ranks and we haven't talked about guys like Jaden Raymond we haven't Raymond, talked about right. uh, we haven't talked about uh, Wells Morrison or Devin or yeah. even the younger younger guys like the eighteen guys that are coming through with, with Marsh and um, Mustafa uh, in Mustafa yeah. and Derry, you know, or is it Derry? Yeah. Yeah. Derry. Yeah. Like they, Derry, yeah. there's, there is a ton of talent that's coming through this Academy. And that excites me uh, a lot because, you know, FFP is going to handcuff us as far as being able to add true talent um, to the, to the senior squad. So the best that we got is to, 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 to really, uh, start bringing up and developing these young guys. 
Nick, I want to pivot now to uh, uh, the director of football. Now, rumors have come out lately of Dougie Freeman possibly going to Man United. Emma doesn't know uh, Dougie was a former Bolton, Bolton, Bolton Wanderers manager. Apparently, his family lives up north. He's the uh, his father-in-law is the Ray Clements, former Liverpool goalkeeper, Spurs goalkeeper. He's got a lot of ties to the north, and apparently, again, they're looking for him to come in as head of recruitment under Dan Ashworth, which I think wouldn't be a great idea for him. But anyway, what is what it is? What are your thoughts, Nick, on possibly losing Dougie Freeman to a uh, Man United? Well, at least we've got an inkling this time of him going. <laughs> if he does go, right. <laughs> just, just it's not, it's not going to come out the blue. No, <laughs> um, but. One, um, I'll believe it when I see it, because it's been in the mirror, it's been in, in whatever uh, other media in, over here in the UK. It's um, a difficult one because I think we've got the, we've got, he seems to get on with Glasner when in that first game or the, the game before Glasner joined when uh, Paddy was in charge and he was sat next, next to uh, Friedman. Um, he's, uh, he, he was leaning across Mark Bright to chat, but um, he was chatting a lot with Dougie Freeman. They seem to be getting on quite well. Now, Dougie's, Dougie's kind of palace through and through, isn't he? he? He said it in the interview about how much he regretted going before um, right. when uh, a previous incarnation back in the nest got an exclusive interview with him just before he came back. Um, mm. Now, he's good at picking out players from from lower leagues and abroad. Now, I'm not sure that Man United fans would be happy with that model. And I'm not sure that the people running Man United will think that they'll make money off the back of signing lesser-known players than they would if they signed, a, for instance, Modric. Instantly, they've got millions of shirt sales with Modric on the back. I know he's a bit old and there's no way they're going to sign him because he's a bit, a bit old, however good he is now. But I'm not sure that he's going to be the best fit there. Um, yeah, the model doesn't But it fit. is what it is. It yeah, is what it is. But Man United are going through a real transitory phase at the moment. Um, that said... It might be good if Glasner would have a say in a director of football that perhaps he wants. Or even because he's he I've read before he or when he that's when he took background. over that, that that's, that's his background. background. And he actually when he first started managing, I'm sure it said at one of the clubs he was at, that he actually kind of did both. He did. Atlanta. Uh, was it so, at, was it was it was it Rabbit Vane or was it uh yeah. it was the first I think it was at last the one he took this last you know? it was at last yeah, okay yeah, it was gotcha. last. yeah. and so. he actually Glasner seems a decent bloke who who just my first impressions of him would put a good case for you wanting to go and work for him yeah so it well, kind of fulfills yeah, that yeah. role but but yeah. in, in in conclusion just give Dougie a pay rise so we can keep him because he's got some awesome players for us over the years and I'll yeah. be very yep. to see him go True, yeah. but True, until yeah. I see it it's you know it's it's not news till it's happened so let's let's worry about it then yeah I'm there too um I'm not going to go into it too much I just think that we have a decent model um I think uh we have a great team recruitment team there's no doubt that Dougie is the is a key part to it especially the Hey, with relationship with players like Wharton's family, a perfect example. How he, that Wharton thing went on for a year and a half because of Dougie. But as far as identifying players, I think that's a that's a club thing. But I mean, I wouldn't want to see him leave. And like Nick said, let's see what happens going forward. Let's just talk on, about our, just, on Wharton, just on Wharton. Just on Wharton, isn't he a good player? I packed him in FIFA today. He's a bronze sixty-eight with really shy <laughs> passing. Come on, EA, sort your lives I don't know out. What that means. I don't know what that means. The, Sorry. the, the, the youth will know what I'm talking about. Exactly. <laughs> but his card is shit in, in EA. Basically, bas basically, Patrick, he, he got him in a video game, and he's nowhere near right. as good as he actually is in real life. No, the funny thing is, no, I know video games. I mean, I play I play football manager all the time. I just don't know what EA, I don't play FIFA. So like in, I mean. in, 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 in their ultimate team, you basically you you can unpack players. So players have are cards. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. So you unpack a player, you get his card. That means you can play him on your team. But he yeah. unpacked Wharton, and Wharton wasn't good at all. Yeah. I'm talking a football manager. 
Looking at football manager, Palace for Life tweeted today that they were very pleased to see that they're featured in the game on the hoardings around the edge uh, during the football manager game. So that's good. I will. I'll get back to you. I haven't even paid attention. I'll let you know because I play all the time. That'd be kind of crazy. Ah. Let's move on to Luton Town this upcoming Saturday. So uh, you guys may or may not know they have not won in the last seven. They've lost their last five in a a row. Their last win was against (laughs) Brighton. 4-0 at home. Uh, Yep, 4-0. T, your thoughts on this upcoming fixture? What do you think about it? Uh, I mean, um, I mean, I'm, I'm still very optimistic about the matchup. Um, Luton is is definitely playing better than they were at the beginning of the season, but uh, I believe Patrick, you mentioned that they've lost like maybe two of their last five uh, or, or something along those lines. So, I mean, they're definitely, of course, a, a beatable team. We're playing at home, uh, you know. It's another week for for Glasner to be in training with the squad, implementing his um, his his strategy, his teaching, his techniques. So, I mean, I'm optimistic uh, in, in in seeing that uh, we can get a, a good result, three points out of this one, especially if we're playing well like we did in the first home match. Uh, Nick, um, thoughts on possible lineup changes now just a little it's early in the week so i don't have a total update but obviously gay won't be available as he was back and apparently iu had a hip injury but glad that mentioned after the game you don't think that that was it was that serious so what do you think going going to saturday we should do as far as lineup nick um get hughes off the bench and put another goalie in there if needs be I thought he was going to say get him off the bench and start him. I was like, wait a minute, Nick. Hold no, on, no, hold no. On. But, but I like where you whip with that. I like where you whip with that. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Husey. I love you, mate. You're so funny. But, yeah, you you didn't do yourself any favours at uh, the Tottenham Stadium. Look, we, we, we've got to set out as we have set out because we want to gel. And I've, I'd, I'd kind of like to see an unchanged team, if at all possible, Fingers crossed IU's injury isn't that bad. And as you said, you know, Glasner said he didn't 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 think it was that bad anyway. Uh post match. Um I just wanna I wanna see Mitchell kind of step up a little bit because he seemed to be caught out against Tottenham. I'd like to see um Anderson be a bit more confident when he's filling in on the wings at the back if the if the left back is forward because that's what cost the goal hopefully he'll have learned a lesson about that um i want to see us take them on a bit more and i think it'll be a little bit easier we just need to make sure that when our wing backs are going forward if a wing back's going forward we've got cover there because i think that's going to be the tactic is, is a diagonal balls across to the corners from Luton. Um, it will be funny to see Angels Townsend playing against us again. Uh, I wish him all the best. I wish we kept him in a way. Um, but Luton just keep, keep going. Who's that guy they got from Everton who I hate, but is just Ross been solid body. That's Ross, Ross Barkley. Ross Barkley's been yeah. amazing this season. For yes. Like, yeah. He's having a career revival this season. And they're, they're also a team that is, is their first season up. They were in National League 10 years ago. And, okay, I remember when they were big before, kind of in the 80s, when it was them and QPR were kind of rivals because they had plastic pitches. Um, <laughs> no other reason than that. But it's not going to be an easy game because Luton are fighting for their lives. They really are. And what's their eight point point eight points difference between us at the moment? Luton got a game in hand. So they, you know, could potentially, if we lose and they win their game in hand, um, they could be within two points of us. So it is a must win, but we will have the support behind us. And I think that really plays right. an important part um, to get forward. So, I'm going to get to that. Um, 
I, I want to talk about uh, actually uh, some of the injuries. Uh, Sammy Laconga, former Paddy Sloney, is who's been playing really well for them. Is uh, yeah. currently has a hamstring. Um, Adebayo, one of the forwards, is uh, has a thigh injury. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, Tom Lockie is out. Mar Marvelous McCamber is also out with the knee injuries out to uh, end of May. But they have quite a mm -hmm. few injuries. We talk about yeah, our injuries, obviously, you. you know. Yeah, Decorey, obviously, Raksaki, Gehi, Olise, Holding. But they have quite a few injuries, too. So, mm -hmm. T, um, obviously, the Burnley match, man. I mean, the first, Glass's first game. Nick mentioned about, you know, it's an important game. Uh, right now, again, we are eight points. A win puts us 11 points. And to me, that gap is a gap that Luton cannot possibly, I don't think they can pull that back. A draw leave, put, leaves it at eight, but gives us you know another point uh, further away from other teams, possibly. So in your mind, T, is this a must-win game or a must-not-lose game? Must not lose. Must not lose. Um, because I think if we're speaking specifically to the relegation battle at this point you're just trying to stack points and in this situation even if it like you said if it, even if it is a draw and it goes one each and we stay at eight points above them that's another right. point that's another point away from the other teams and in the grand scheme of it it's like hey at some point somebody's going to slip up let's just make sure it's not us you know what i mean so down the road Luton's going to drop some matches or drop a match or, or two, and we're going to pick up some points. And that's kind of the the, the, the thought behind it. So I think right. it's a must not lose a match more than a must win match. Are we, um, oh, do we all concur that Burnley and Sheffield United are definitely gone now? Because it's yeah, got, got to be a miracle. Yeah. I mean, so it's I mean, that last place, isn't it? Yeah. yeah I mean, they're 13. I mean, place. they're 13. They're, they're 13 points, man. Like, yeah. It's not happening. It's not. It's like so, they would have to have a miracle run. And the other thing is, is we know that I think it's going to be at about a month that we find out any further punishment that Ever Everton might get and Nottingham Forest. Now, Everton are in deep trouble. Uh, the fans are turning against Daesh big style. And mm. that doesn't help at all. We saw it, it's kind of what happened to us. Um, so I think he's going to struggle to dig himself out of that hole. Um, as for Forrest, I'd, I'd almost say that a way to Forrest is going to be just as important, which is our next game after on the 30th of March, isn't it? So we've got two, two, I hate the phrase, six-pointers. I think if we win one of those, we'll be fine. But I'm not going to beat myself up over it if we do do fall to a defeat on Saturday because I think we're, we're, we're still relatively safe, especially with Glasner. And the more time he has, I think the more attacking we'll be, more creative we'll be. The players will know more about what they're doing and hopefully it will work. So I want to go to one more thing. It's been, it's been doing its rounds on the, uh, the internet as far as um, our Proclivity, is that a right word for giving up goals after the 75th minute? Is that a right, yeah. the right term? Yes. The right term. Yes. So mm -hmm. we have given up 20 of our 47 get 47 goals after the 75th yeah, minute, yeah, which is 42 percent cool. of the goals we've conceded. We have yeah. actually 14 points we've given away by conceding goals in the 80th minute or onwards. So think about that. Imagine we had those 14 points back. That puts us over 40. That puts us over 40 points, doesn't it? 42 points we have right now. We would actually be We'd be pushing top 10. That's what happens when your fucking manager gives everybody Sunday off and wants to go for a nice <laughs> roast with a with post that. bottle not, of wine. Not, not I'm not, I'm not you know, I, I not may be wrong that. there, but three days a week, your fitness is gonna is not gonna so, be as good as if you're doing more than that, is it? Surely. I'm, I mean, I'm not I'm, I'm just, a professional athlete, Pat. And uh, team, I just want to point one thing out really quickly. Go ahead. It goes back to the discussion that we were talking about about you know, possibly winning this next one and Right, taking right. the one against Nottingham Forest. Not when I'm looking at our schedule, we need results against Nottingham. We need results against Luton because you come back and you, you you're, you're finishing your schedule with Man City, Liverpool, West Ham, Fulham, Man United, Wolves, Aston Villa. Like those are 
tough. And Newcastle. And Newcastle, which has hasn't, to which, which which has to be rescheduled. Yeah. So yeah. you're you're we're in the season with a gauntlet of matches that we're going to be trying to find points in. You know what I mean? So it's and like, the, the other teams around us haven't got difficult games. I don't know. know. I mean, I mean, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what other people's schedules look like, but I just, I'm just saying, ours as far as where we're getting points from, like, or or, or where we're getting three points from, especially. It's but let's like, play that game real quick, all right? So I'll give you Everton's schedule rest of the season: Bournemouth away, Newcastle away, Burnley home, Chelsea away, Forest at home, Brentford at home, Luton away, Sheffield United home, and Arsenal last game of the season, which could be. Massive for Arsenal, and that's that, so that, that that's that's, that's at least that's at least 12, 12 to fifteen points that they could get there off in winning win, winning matches against teams uh, like uh, Luton, I'll, Sheffield. I'll, right. I'll give you Forest. Sorry, have, how many of that, Patrick? Before you before you tell yeah. us, Forest, how many of those games are going to be psychologically tiring for them, given uh-huh. how many they're playing uh-huh. teams around them? Because you, you've got to know if you're playing Man United or, or but, but maybe not so much Man United, but if you're going to be playing City and Arsenal, you, you're pretty much, although we've said we hated going into mentality of a game knowing that you're going to lose, but but right. in all probability, you're going to lose, aren't you? Yep. So it's kind of psychologically less damaging unless you get beat 5 or 6 nil than losing against uh, if Forest lose against Luton or Luton lose against Forest. It's, it's going to be Gonna make it that much harder than losing against Man United and Chelsea and whatever in the list that we've got. So I, I don't know. I'm just putting that out there. It's a great point, but I'll also say that I think that this year's title race, having three teams, Liverpool, Arsenal, and City, are gonna make it near impossible for the teams in the bottom to win those matches. We're in the past where you would drop a game here or there because there are three teams in. I think chance of like Everton going there and winning the game again on the loot in or not in the forest or us, for instance, getting actually we're done, right? We've now we got city and we got city in Liverpool. Come on, come on, we got city, city, we've got Liverpool, both. Yep. We got Liverpool to play away so, as well. We're playing back away. to back, well, actually. one away, yeah, one home. So, uh, yeah, uh, so very quickly, I'll give you forest, Brighton, Brighton away, Luton home, us home, Fulham home, Spurs away, Wolves home, Everton away, City home, Sheffield United. Banker away, Chelsea. You know what? Burnley. Not in Forest are not going down. Not with that schedule. What well, every point production? That would okay. Great point. That, Nick. that might be, be the idiot. only thing that, I'm going to say. That might be the um, the, the, the strong. That would be that. Back. That could be the killer. And then really quickly, Luton. Luton's got us. Bournemouth away. Forest at home. Spurs away. Arsenal away. Bournemouth home. City away. Brentford home. Wolves away. Everton. Big match. May 4th, Everton Luton's gonna be a massive game. West Ham away and then Fulham at home last game. They they but they're so far, they they could struggle. Okay, so for me, I'm gonna go back, rewind this back to what we just said before. For me, this is a pretty much a must-win game for us. I think we've got to win this game. Uh T makes a great point. I didn't even want to look forward, but those last 10 fixtures are gonna be death. We talked about Vieira last year, that that run that he had middle yeah. of that season, what got him fired. This is that's the you know Fulham, Fulham aside, maybe Wolves aside. That going of the games is going to be just as just as difficult. So I think it'd be difficult for us to go into those games needing points. I'm not saying we can't get points out of it because I have a lot of confidence in Glasner. This three week break is going to be massive for us. I hope we're going away to Bodo Glimp of someone playing someone. Apparently yeah, the playing in Marbella. Yeah. yeah, Marbella with Marbella, which is awesome. Marbella, so that would be good for us. I just think that, but I just still think again, Tease makes a great set, great point. Forest. And Luton, these two matches get six points. We're golden. Don't get the six points. We could be in trouble. So having said all of that, and I'll give you the referee for the game. This is for you, Nick. The first ever British South Asian referee, Premier League history, will be doing our game. His name is Sonny Singh Gill. Good luck to him. I'm not going to call him rubbish yet because I haven't seen him. You know, I'm not big on referees. Right, so nobody can talk bad about him. Nobody can talk bad about him before the game. No, 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 <laughs> I've got a friend on Twitter, at Acid right. Mouse, who's an Aldershot fan and said he was uh, refereeing in the National League two seasons ago. Wow. What a so ride. he must be good if he's got promoted. And he said, as far as he can remember, he was a good ref. 
Good. Really? We, we look forward to it. So, obviously, last game at home was a brilliant game for Glasner. Uh, got the red card. We were all over them. I think it could be similar this time. But, again, we did lose the game away to Luton. Uh, first time we ever lost them in the Premier League. Obviously, first time we actually played them in the Premier League. So, let me go to predictions. We'll go to – let's go Nick first. What do you predict, what are you predicting for this game? 4-3 Palace. <laughs> I'm writing that down. I'm writing that down. FA Cup yeah. semi-final. Yeah, Liverpool. Mm. I'm writing that down. Mm. 1990 semi-final score. 4-3. T, what about you? Uh, I'll go 3-1 Palace. 3-1. I'm going to go 2-1 Palace. I, um, I'm i confident we get the win, but I'm not confident of a clean sheet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's that. I, can't, I, can't, I can't go with the clean sheet just because yeah. of... Even though we got against Burnley, I'm, I'm not confident with that. So... <laughs> um. Got to wrap it up, folks. Again, please like, subscribe, share. When it comes out, podcast, download it. Appreciate everyone for listening, tuning in. We are very close. We're getting close to that 5,000 on YouTube. So, again, for D, all hard work he does, please, if you can, share, subscribe, like. For Where me, is he? Patrick, he's in. Where is he, by the way? He's Saudi. in Dubai. Dubai. He's Saudi in Dubai. Dubai yeah, he's going yeah, to Saudi and Dubai. Dubai. He's in Dubai yeah. today. He's going to Saudi for. I think he's going to Mecca. I don't want to yep. share the kids' business, but yeah, he's going to for, for Man, so he, he, he deserves a break. He puts in a lot of hard work. He really does. The kid yeah. works hard. So uh, unfortunately, you'll have me and me around for a while. Please, no, no comments in the in the in the about. But anyway, so again, for me, Patrick, hell. Nick, T. <laughs> um, appreciate everybody. Um, until next time, come on, you palace.